We again have the privilege of listening to Anita Bayard, who has been sharing her wonderful memories of Baba in the early days, which is so precious now, leading in time a bit, and we're most fortunate to have a, a person who experienced those years, those intimate years with Baba. And I again want to introduce Anita Bihar. First, I must tell you, it's very difficult to be here after those angelic angels we saw. It was like an Italian painting, a Renaissance painting, where you see them. All they needed were little halos and little instruments. And to suddenly come to serious working, like Baba would say, oh, what a headache. <laughs> so now your headache begins, and mine too. I wanted to tell you, it was interesting, to tell you about the last Sahavas of Baba in India. One can go on because one's memory, while I'm sitting here, becomes more and more open to myself. But then I would have to stay here a very long time, and we would find me so bored. When Baba wrote to me about, I very naively wrote back, I said, Baba, Roji is very busy. He can't leave at this moment. Can't we leave at the moment that he is less busy? Baba wrote to me and said, not only I want your presence, but I need you for my work. So naturally that was a necessity. The plane with all the, pe the people from New York, some of them were coming, uh, stopped in Paris and I was able to take the, the same plane as they to go to uh, India. Now you see, all those years when I've been wanting to go to India, no, I was left in Europe. So when I was in India on the plane, I sort of looked down. We understood what they say, Mother India. It was Mother India that I was coming to. And then I saw all this dryness of the grass and the fields and everything, which gave it a very dull yellowish color. And then there were patches of violet. Then we arrived at the airport. And then, as you know, when Baba has the mandal, it's perfection on earth. You don't carry your bags. You don't do anything. They all look at you, and there's that wonderful word which I tell you, care to care. You feel that you're cared for. Then, here I arrived, then we arrived when Baba was at Pune, and that's at Pune, you know. And there, my heart, I said, oh. Because every time you see Baba, it's another form. There's always another form, another understanding, a deeper, something deeper in you. I re when I got to the hotel, it was a big shock. Darling Dean was waiting for me. And we were put, but I didn't realize that hotels could be like that. It looked a terrible, dumpy place. Mm, there was some English furniture, which at one time was Victorian, it must have been very lovely. And as the Indians don't take care of anything, you can imagine what it would become like. So, Deal is there, and I enter that room, and what do I see hanging everywhere? Are clothes, things, and Deal in such a state of despair. There's so many insects, so many animals. Look here, there. It was frightful. And I said, Delia, if we come into the highest of the high, we can also support the lowest of the low. Now, we mustn't complain. We mustn't be difficult. I said, oh, Delia said, oh, yes. She didn't sleep, not one wink at night. You, I couldn't turn in my bed, but I said, what is it? I couldn't take, I couldn't take, my, I had to put my shoes on in the bed before I came out. Well, anyway. So the next day, then as soon as we got out of the hotel, because we were going to see Baba immediately, but the, the, the older ones had arrived, the first thing the Delia sees is a mongoose who's playing with a cobra. And Delia gives out the most frantic yells. I said, now Delia, don't be worried. You know, first of all, uh, those cobras are probably, all their teeth are taken out. You don't have to worry, it's just a trick. <laughs> there she was shivering, I took her by the arm. 
when I came to Baba. You know, there was Baba. It was Baba and a different Baba. And yes, the same smile, that same, when you're with him, or when you're, there's something that happens to you, there's always a, a fraction uh, where time stops. It's something so extraordinary when time stops. You begin to feel, you have a sense of eternity. And Baba looked at me and I thought, oh, I said, look, Baba. You know that the first thing that Delia saw was the cobra and the snake. I said, really, that was terribly, terribly difficult for her. And Baba said, she. I said, yes, she. <laughs> and then became what for me was a very difficult time. Not only there were so many that had come from everywhere, you see, had changed in a sense, a physical change, but I felt, as I was very, always very sensitive to him, this change, I saw an impersonal side. He made the effort to be personal with us, and then it was impersonal. And to my despair and my inner, which I never showed naturally, Nita, now is the moment you're going to have a very difficult lesson. And as Baba said, you must always pay, play your game well. He always says, play your game well. Now you have to play the game. And the game was to sit there and yet to be away from Baba, not to be too near because I thought my place was away. And then, Baba, I wrote discourses, there were things that were happening, uh, but the most interesting thing I thought at the time was when Baba, and that's what I want to give to you, I'll come back to the art afterwards, was the idea of the inner voyage. And that is something extraordinary, the inner voyage. I didn't understand it at the time without it, but afterwards, becomes that inner voyage where you are seized by the beauty. And to me, what was that inner voyage? Was certain things of Baba that, were, that have been told to you that suddenly becomes an inner awakening and it's an inner beauty that you begin, images that begin to take place. Wonderful. You don't have to go anywhere anymore. The world can do everything it wants, and you're just having the most beautiful trip. And it's not through any kind of outer excitement or stimulant. It's through your own happening inside of you. Something, when it, when it takes place, it's as if you begin a new language. This language is not a language, it's your own language, it's your own intimacy. And it's a, a way that you get Ilsa to the other person. And then in this other person, suddenly you know it's Baba, and the Baba in you, and the Baba exterior begin to meet. And when that begins to meet, that's the real coming together. And it's a wonderful thing when it happens. Sometimes the other person doesn't know it, but you know. You and then with Baba, he made us see all India came to us, in the sense all kinds of tribes, all kinds of things, all kinds of uh, what was happening in India. And he was so alert, and he was so alive, and then, what was in sat in the in in Pune, Gurupasad, that's What do you call it, Gurupasad? That when you sat there, suddenly I realized what the chamber of the king was. Because before, you see, we lived in the chamber of the king, and suddenly I had to realize there was Baba. In, in his chamber, but we were outside, and then everybody was so busy. They were who was writing, who was doing this, who was doing that. Everybody was so concerned, as if there was all the ministers of the king working, 
Will the king is somewhere else. Beautiful idea. When suddenly you have been in the chamber, but then you're put out of the chamber and you become spectator of all this. Let's say it maybe still with the impersonal sign. To tell you the truth, I didn't want the impersonal sign. I couldn't stand this sort of so much happening around me, and I thought, how much more? To just be at Barbara's feet and be completely ignorant of everything. No, but you have to learn. You have to be awakened. You have to do your, your work. You have to take life seriously and not seriously at the same time. I used to sit there and watch all this. Even Baba, I'd always see Baba. Give me a, and I was sitting with the, the care of Baba, as I told you, where all the, the Eastern, the Westerners were all given seats. They all made sure that everything was nicely arranged, and Baba would give us a little look where we were. And that, as I say, I had to learn the impersonal. I had to learn to be out the side, but the outside was very difficult. I don't say it was easy. I didn't, I didn't care for it at all. But I had to come to the impersonal attitude. As we were in this sort of dumpy hotel, let's say, you Americans would say, it was very dumpy. Um, but what was charming was all the mandolin would come, Audi would come, Dutton would come. We all used to sit, and it was terribly amusing because it was very alive. Perdom was with us, he slept. The, a, a cote. Then Baba gave, he said, we were allowed a certain mo moment with him. And, when, and we were to be alone with Baba, like before. I rushed in and I knelt at his feet. I looked at him. And such suffering was inside of me. I couldn't be that girl that I was before. I couldn't talk. I just didn't know what to say, and I realized how people could cry in Baba, and yet I knew that I couldn't do that to Baba. He always saw me smiling, he always seen, I always did, made him laugh, and there he looked at me, and I looked at him, and the only thing that came out of me, I said, Baba, aren't we going to have a meal together? Hmm, Baba made a kind of a sigh. Oh, I said, oh no, Baba, no, no. Of course not. I don't, no, 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 I'll be all right. Don't, I, I said to Bob, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, it's quite all right. And then I had to go out. And then begins for me, as I say, the idea of an impersonal attitude, to be less personal about things, to come back. And I sat, Deedee and I sat on that, Horrible little hotel. We never went anywhere. We never stirred out of the place. We stayed there. So when we used to come to Baba for his, you know, he gave us a lot of descriptions of things. He, he, it was very interesting what he was saying. And every time I would, um, because I began to be very serious, Baba would look at me and says, Oh, Anita, Anita. We can't work when she's there, because she can't be serious. <laughs> it was just the opposite of what was happening to me. I thought I had to, and I tried to listen so much that I didn't hear anything. Have you noticed it when you want to listen with such intensity, you don't hear? Everything goes beyond you. And then everyone would come and we'd go out and Baba was planning. And then he planned that very beautiful, the last, the arty. The arty probably has remained the most beautiful thing that I took back from India. And there was Baba when I saw Baba pray. And that remains, I can, I can, when, yeah, I can even see what my eyes open. I don't have to shut my eyes and not do anything. I just see. And you know, most people, when they pray, they pray like that. But Baba, when he prayed, as if he had wings on his, on his elbows, and he prayed while everyone sang. 
for the arty, and it was the most exquisite thing I have ever seen. Not a picture or a painting of any great artist can give you what that time was. Barbara praying it was extremely beautiful. Now I see you're all going so serious, and I can't continue. <laughs> Well, I'll go from there, from the Baba of, of the prayer, and I'll go back to tell you about art, what is painting, what is art. You know what Baba said, I love artists because through art one can express oneself. Art, when inspired with love, leads to higher realms. Love, art, and that art will open for you the inner life. When you are lost in it, your ego diminishes. Love infinite appears, and when love is created, God is attained. So you see how art can lead one to find infinite God. Well, it's very easy, isn't it? <laughs> There's such thing as we call illustration in art. You sit, you sit before a, you sit before a canvas. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to just do this. Um, I want to copy it. When a great artist sits in front of it, it's not a copy anymore. Something mysterious happened. You see. Now there's been an evolution in art, coming to the cubistic period, where the, the, the form has been. Um, how do I put it? It's been broken. I won't go to any of these details because that I don't think is interesting. I don't want to lose my thread with Baba. Um, when you're sitting before your canvas, you're sitting there. When it's art, you're not illustrating. It's not a copy. It's a creation. And creation is are many ways. You don't know why is it when you look at a great painting, no matter how ignorant you are, there's something there that you're taken by. When you see something that is an illusion of things, well, it's just an illusion. And that same time with Adi, when he came to t fetch me from Baba, when I asked him, what is art? He said, is the road to God. At the same time, he told me, he, sp he said, don't you think, Anita, this is such a wonderful phrase in the book where Baba says, he, de he dedicates this to the universe. The, real the, the illusion that sustains reality. Well, that's art. It's as simple as that. It's the illusion that sustains reality. And that is something of a great awakening in you. Because then, even in this illusion, you must be careful. Because it holds, it's holding reality. And don't you think that that's a beautiful inner thought for yourself to to think of, that you can't be careless, you can't do this, let's take it in a very low plane, you can't be dirty, you can't do this, because it holds a certain reality. And that little speck, and then that little speck is just bigger and bigger and bigger. But in art, that illusion, a real artist is not trying to paint an illusion. He's trying to go to reality. Do I make myself clear? You see? So that, that is art. When Baba, one day, we were all seated around him. Mind you, we were all seated, we had to answer. He said, what is love? What, no, what is God? Oh, you can't imagine. And our darling Arena, hers was really, it was the ocean itself that went on with words. And this and that and ah, he said to me, that's creation, he said to me. 
and that's love. So you see, there is the going to attain love, but to attain love is still something that has to go beyond art. Now, very difficult for me to continue because I think I've given you so much to think about that if there's any question you'd like to ask, I'd be very glad to answer if I can answer it. Well, because you see, when I sit in front of my, um, when I sit in front of my uh, paint, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, I think it's my easel canvas, something blank happens in me. I'm completely empty, and then something begins. Let's say it's like the whim. <laughs> it's a little whim that begins in me. <laughs> And that little whim begins to, and then of course there's something that is that I'm wanting to to tell after a while. Sometimes I do it well, and sometimes I do it very badly. Sometimes it comes quickly, and sometimes it comes through hard work. But great art is a, a new vision. It's something that is. I don't know, that you, have, that you can't understand immediately. Just like if they put me in front of a great big engine and say to me, well, just how is this engine done? Well, the engineers would have found it very difficult to explain to me. And I think there's something in art, in, in, in all the arts, in, in the voice, in the, in, the, in the dancing, in the, all the expressions, and probably those are the lovely expressions of God. Don't you think so? I don't know. Let's say it is. You know, I'll tell you a little story of... Um, there's this wonderful singer, this Spanish woman called uh, Cavalla. Cavalle, what's her other name? Cavalier. She's a fantastic... What's her other name? She has another... Hmm? Montserrat. Montserrat Cavalier. And there was a barber person who came to, he was um, from Col Colombia, 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 you say, Colombia. He came to Paris, and I found him delightful because he had a, a, a language of an artist. He had a real lang language of an artist, and he was studying singing. And he spoke of singing just like an artist, would, like a painter, would speak of certain things. And he went, and he, he made me understand. He went to hear her. And he said, you know, I, he was there with his wife, he, and he said, there's something that she reached, a certain height in her voice. He said, that, he said something must happen to her, she can't go on, because there's maybe a note or some mysterious thing that she attained that her body couldn't anymore keep it. And he said to his wife, she's going to faint. At that moment, she fainted. I thought that was very interesting. There are certain things that your body, or whatever it is, or art, like a revelation, I don't know. As I say, you must keep the mysterious side of Baba. And Baba was extremely mysterious about things. As I said to very many people, I said, ask Baba the right question. He'll give you the right answer. But most questions are foolish, and you'll get the foolish answer. <laughs> yes? Technique. Well, you must have a certain technique, which takes... To, yes. Well, you see, an artist both has both technique and great feeling. Let's say the heart and the mind go together. There must be a balance between these things because the technique is the way you handle your colors. And yet colors are never the same. On one day, the same color is not the same on another day. I don't know why. You, you yourself 
Goethe wrote something very beautiful on, on color. But all that is, I don't know why. I suppose text can tell you why one day he can go very high, jump very high, another day he can't lift himself. Hmm? These are things that, hmm? very simple, that's why. There you are. You can't, uh, you, you, you can't, is it the air, is it what? I don't know. I simply don't, I couldn't answer that. But your, the technique and, and, and your experiences make your technique. You know, I mean, at school you're taught to work with a big brush and this and that, and suddenly maybe when you're, you discover that's just the kind of brush you don't want to work with, there are some artists that begin to make their own brushes. You learn the technique and then you forget it. And then something inside of you, we call it the divine, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, can you elaborate or maybe give a personal example of the statement that art is just like the illusion of strange reality? Now, don't you think, after what I told you, that you should try and know for yourself? Or should I give you a foolish answer? It's too difficult. And when you, you yourself begin to think about it, you see what I mean? It'll be your own experience. And no one can take it away from you. Hmm? And through Baba's love, and I say his love, it's so such variety. It's such variety. It goes deeper and deeper. And if, even if someone to say, but he's not what you say he is, you say, why do I care? Hmm? Yes? Has Baba seen your work? Well, my, the only work, of course, I never speak about my work. As you notice, I don't like to talk about my work, which is something, has nothing of importance. Um, he only saw that portrait. The first one. The first one, which I didn't even think of giving it to him. And then I didn't know how to paint. I was just learning. You see? Yes? Uh, at the time when you visited Baba in India, then you found this, this change in your relationship with him? Not in my relation. I had to. And it wasn't. I ha, I, it, yes, it wasn't. Really, I had to see another aspect which I've been always, I suppose what you say in modern psychology, I don't know what you call it now, the revolt against the father. But I like to say, my father and I are one. Did that, did that precipitate um, a change in the course of your artwork? I had never thought of it. You know, and I never thought of it. Because it's, you're continually working. And I hope the change is because of the way you work. Baba, something inside. I don't feel it's outside. It went deeper into me. Yes? Yes, in light of the notion that um, art is an illusion, the reality, is there any reason to distinguish between our common notion of art and any kind of work done which is an attempt to reach that reality. You know, you're speaking to someone who's worked so hard in, in, uh, in, in trying to find in art what it is. Those are questions that haven't much importance for me. You see what I mean? Because I explained to you there's an illustration of something, a copy, a copy, and then there's art. That's, well, let's say copy is the illusion and art is a form of reality. And most people love illusion. They adore it. They want more of it. You know? It's something so agreeable and yet so full of unhappiness. It's only when that illusion doesn't anymore stimulate you to begin to see. And so when you put it in its right place, 
You can enjoy the, the illusion like the reality. You can put it, when Baba says, which I think is so beautiful, when Baba says, um, put your shadow in back, your shadow, let it be in back of you. And the light, when you're in the light, you don't see the shadow. But if you move from the light, the shadow is always there playing its tricks, isn't it? But if you are still in that, in that light, those shadows, you know it's there, but it doesn't play with you. Because those shadows can take terrific forms. You can have fun with them, but you pay for it. After a while, you prefer to stand in a light. This cosmic plan picture that he only comes into this particular world of illusion as Avatar God Man, and that he shows us how to spiritualize the material. Yes. So, therefore, this, Another this word. illusion that Maya has just a significant place. The detachment of it. I remember Margaret crying when I was sort of like in moments of trying to get out of the whole. Illusion. She said, oh, but I love mine. Naturally. See, because it, you can have both. Uh -huh. Because one sustains it. The, the illusion sustains it. But you know, you know it. You're not anymore a slave of it. And people are slaves of it. You're, you're freed. What's more amusing than a beautiful day or somebody, a lovely expression of someone you love? No. You say, oh, it's just an illusion. But my heavens, it's a reality too. And many things that you do. Why do we call it a rest for all of you? Don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Yes? It's almost time, isn't it? No. It's like putting a tooth. <laughs> yes? About Baba. Would you ask me a question about Baba? Of course. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I, I thought I was making Baba a little, a little bit, you know, another aspect because I was asked. You see? And I thought for you, in your, in some people with their work, yes? Um, I'm wondering, uh, have you shown that slide of the, the work you did while you were there? Yes, yes, I've, I gave it, I gave the slide. I gave the slide. Mind you, don't think it's a good painting. It's just that I, it was a, <coughs> Baba posed, and I had this experience with Baba. There are many more, more, perhaps more beautiful portraits, but Baba can never be seized as he really is because it's, it's something eternal, it's something everlasting going, you know. This is just a little... Okay. Hmm? I don't know what he was doing with me, but he did a lot. <laughs> yes? What is the feeling of the contemporary? Well, you know, there are many people, as Baba would say, many people are called and few are chosen. <laughs> so that's the, so that's the answer. <laughs> few are chosen. Yes? Who are some of your favorite painters? What? Who are some of your favorite painters? Now, she would like to know about Baba, and I'm afraid that I would tell you that personally, but with her, I would like her to feel that she would like more about Baba. So if you ask a question, so what would... you ran out of things to say about her, I think. Yes. Said about Baba? <laughs> Anita? Yes? What about the, um, the young people in, when you live in Paris? Yes. Um, are you in contact with yes. Baba? Yes, yes, yes. I've, you see, um, let me see. 
No, they're not any artists. You know, art is a difficult thing. Huh? But there are, there, there, there are, and, and you know, a new, I have a feeling a new wave is coming, something new is coming. You see, pretty soon you're going, it was like, it was very funny, somebody, I, uh, 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 something very banal, you know, um, I heard somebody asked this um, Rolling Stone boy, uh, Jaeger, uh, uh, and they said, um, what, what is the audience like now? Oh, he said, very different audience. They said, why is the difference? Well, you see, we have the 20 years ago, now they're 20 years older. We have the fathers who come with their children, and the children need the grandparents. So we're all ages now. It's not anymore like it was 20 years ago with just the young ones. So that uh, I feel with Baba, there's a new, there's a new, you see? Uh, uh, others, uh, let's say we around Baba but were m much more ignorant of certain things. And I feel now you know more. I'm amazed. I'm amazed how all of you, whom I've, some that I've met, are so much more alive to certain things that we didn't know. You know, kind of as if the, the, the I can't call it the intellect, but probably something is getting, we were, let's say the intelligence and the heart has its intellect too, the intelligence of the heart, is, seems to me more awakened. You know, yes? Uh, I don't know. Probably it was, I never was at Nasik, I was at Pune, I was in Pune, in Pune, Pune. Well, I had to accept him impersonally and to see him even in those that I disliked and to keep my manners and what I would like to say that they didn't like to myself, to be less frank, more understanding, let's say a little bit of diminishing of the ego. I still have a lot, but they a little bit. I understood it had to be done. I had to take my medicine. And of course what upset me was the terrible suffering of Baba. There I really experienced suffering. Not on the physical plane, but inside. It was something inside. And I felt I said, I'm sure I'll never see him again in the flesh. And that's what amused me in Kitty's book. Before, you know, in Kitty's book, it brought back experiences that we had, but separately. Now, in Kitty's book, she speaks about the, um, the uh, on top of, at Cannes, when Baba gave this lovely party, and it was my birthday. And it was, that's why we had the birthday. And Baba, whether you liked it or didn't like it, you had to bring a present for the person. You all had to bring presents, as you know. And when dear Nadja, who's just passed away, you know, Nadja, she put her foot, she had made a wonderful kind of pudding, and she stepped right into it. <laughs> so I said to her, I said to her, oh, Baba, you gave it a spiritual push and it's going to taste so much better. <laughs> <You know? laughs> there. Hmm? So if there's anyone here, or the, that was the one, but it, to me it, it, it was the lear, it, it was like learning there when I was at, uh, in Pune. That's what was interesting. Was, I felt we were being taught without realizing it. Certain things were given. And you know, as with Baba, uh, with Baba, each one, maybe in one phrase, we all have different experiences. Where, let's say, the, the root is the same, the root, but the branches are different. All the branches. And yet, maybe that root, it belongs to the, to the same plant. 
and we're all experiencing it differently. And that, I think, is, is extraordinary with Baba. Baba lovers have made it easier to bring the father into your everyday life and work. Look, when I met Baba, Baba was I, 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 to me that question. No, I it, it was it, I was for Baba. You know what I mean? There was no separation. It was it's like a gradual unfolding of itself. Let's say the Baba gives you experiences that you need for this unfolding of yourself. You see what I mean? So, being with someone, a Baba, or like Roger, it we, we were unfolded. He helped me to unfold myself as I helped him to unfold. But the, the source is Baba. You understand? Oh. Yes, I think the truth is out. <laughs> hmm? anyway, I think you know how we should end? I think we should end with him imitating Adi and I answering and I giving an answer to Adi. Would you perform Adi? <laughs> well, Adi, Adi, you know if I sit in your seat it's because I'm very tired and I'm not well and you're a strong hunk and you're very strong. Well, where is that jack of smoke? Give me a chair, please. Jack Sir. <laughs> Adi, couldn't you find someone better than Jack Small? No, really. <laughs> what kind of a barber person are you? Jack Small. He eats all day long. He's never satisfied. <laughs> I don't know what Baba has done, but he's given me this mad liar from Los Angeles who should have stayed there. But I don't know, but he is a good man, he has a good heart, and he helps. Adi, you know why? Because you're a sinner. <laughs> well, we are all sinners. But you're a special one. <laughs> well, Baba has forgiven me also, Anita. Like oh. that time, when I was wearing the hat in the 30s and you came, this beautiful velvet hat I was wearing. Yes. And Anita came saying, Adi, give me please hat. It was terrible, which is true. I saw, this lo I saw this lovely hat on your head and after all I thought it would look much better on my head. <laughs> so I asked you to give me the hat, which we did. And of course the first thing I did, I walked into Baba's room, and I put the little hat on my head. Baba looked at me and says, Oh, I said, Adi, you came in, and you know what went on with Baba and you. Hey, <laughs> Baba, and, and you see, Baba said to you, back to India, you have disobeyed. Go off. And there was this so suddenly, I didn't know the language, but I understood the feeling. And I said to Baba, Baba, if you do that, I'll commit suicide. It wasn't the fault of Adi. I asked him for the hat. I asked for the hat, and I was miserable. And then what you did, you went out very quietly, and I put the hat on, Bob, on my head. And Baba said, what are you going to do with that hat? I said, I'm going to wear it. <laughs> Adi, and that made a great link between us to the point that when, as you know, with Baba, we never were allowed to go next to the boys. We were under very strict, very strict, um, uh, never. They could, and Baba said, not too near and not too far. Not too near and not too far. And when Adi, years when Baba, after, when uh, dropped his body, and you, Adi, you came to, um, you came to, to London that first time, and to my horror, what do I see? That you embrace all. And I embraced you, Adi. And I said Very to nice, you, yes. Adi, 
I said to you, Adi, isn't this ridiculous? When it would have been fun, it was forbidden, and now it has no meaning. <laughs> You, 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 then you remember what I said to you? I said, better late than never. <laughs> Do you think it we should get this? It is not a case of better luck next birth. Oh, better luck this birth. That's what Baba was doing then. Ah, I see, I see, Ade. Oh, what wicked thoughts after all those years of of obedience. <laughs> well, Baba tweaked my ear with that 19-year-old girl in, the, in Pune, I mean in Bombay, 1929, when I was lusting after this girl. <laughs> and Baba then is asking me what my thoughts were. <laughs> and I said, oh, nothing, Baba. <laughs> nothing at all. I'm just thinking of you, Baba. <laughs> and then... Continue. The next Sunday they come again, this fam nice Indian family with this beautiful young girl. And they then, ah, oh, I'm thinking, looking at her, and then Baba right away, Adi, what are you thinking? <laughs> oh, only of you, Baba. <laughs> and this was going on for I don't know how many weeks. And I was beginning to feel very sad, very, very... <laughs> Feeling bad inside, I don't know, getting a very bad mood. <laughs> and then finally, I went crying to Baba, please Baba, please don't ask me in front of the crowd. I will tell you then, I, I think I'm thinking these thoughts, but not in front of the crowd, please. <laughs> ask me aside and then I will tell you. And Baba said, very good, but just be honest. Oh, Adi, what, the last time that we were in England, a very sad picture. Why in the world were you seated in front of television? Maria and I had gone away. We just left you for a little while. And there we come back. And what do we see? Seated in front of the television. You look like an old, old something decrepit. You had a, a, a shawl all over you, and you had that John Small as if he was going to the mountains. Small of Jacks. A hat, and it was not possible to look like that. Are you, I mean, Baba doesn't need people to look like that. Well, Anita, I don't know. I was just looking like I do. <laughs> and I don't try to look like you or anyone else. I just look like plain Adi. Adi Kaka. <laughs> it was terribly funny. You have no idea the last with, with Adi. I, we, but we came back, and what do we see? Seated, looking at television, two huge bundles, <laughs> an enormous cupboard. And that was Adi, and next to him sat this curious <laughs> just more with a shawl and covered, but with a hat on. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I really can't forget it. Do you think that um, we've made them serious, or should we stop, Adi? Well, you know, you have a lot of work to do because you have to kind of, you know, uh, mold them a little bit. Yes, I would like to give one more discourse. <laughs> Maybe about um, God speaks in the uh, beyond the beyond state of God, uh, which everyone should understand before they leave Zahavas. Adi, now make it simple. You know you mustn't take them too high. If you take them too high, they're going to fall very low. Well, they're low already, so what the matter with a little bit of height? <laughs> Raise them up a little. Get their consciousnesses up. You know Americans all the time thinking sex, thinking all this stuff all yes, the time. all the time. I all know. the time their minds in the gutter. Yes, in the gutter. <laughs> Terrible. They have to come up out of the gutter, Not come the into gutter. Baba's house. Yes. Terrible. And so they need to concentrate on the conviction of God speaks and of the reality in the yes. illusion. And all they want to do is to lie in the gutter. Yes. They are some mad people. <laughs> 
very mad, but they they have the love for Baba, and that is all that matters. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. <laughs>